Welcome to the Chief Architect Bathroom Demonstration. My name is Emily and I will be presenting for you today. We also have Philip here on chat, so if you do have any questions throughout today's webinar, feel free to chat those in. Before we get going with our bathroom design, I did want to cover the GoToWebinar control panel. So the first area in your control panel addresses your audio. We have our mic and speakers set as the standard and everybody is muted so there's no feedback. So you don't need a mic today, just your speakers. And if you're not able to hear correctly, uh, feel free to select that sound check and that will help adjust the different levels in GoToWebinar. If that's still not working, just select that telephone radio and a phone number uh, will pop up there for you so you can dial in. The next area is the question. So type in any question that you have throughout today's webinar or will be around at the end as well. So we can answer those questions for you today. You can also hit the send button right here after you have that entered and uh, we'll be answering those throughout. If you don't see this larger area, it will minimize to this little toolbar. So select that orange arrow button and that will restore this larger area for you to control all these settings. So we're going to focus on our bathroom space today. We're going to start out just by designing our space, drawing out our walls, dimensioning, creating um, our bathroom space. Then we're going to get into our custom vanities, working with our cabinet tools, fixtures, and so forth. We'll also touch on a custom backsplash tool. And then we'll work towards our glass shower, a built-in bathtub. We'll touch on our lighting options a little bit and electrical. Adjust materials, uh, we're actually going to do that throughout the whole um, presentation so you get a good idea of how to adjust materials. And then we'll finalize our demonstrations with our cabinet schedule, materials list, and a brief plan set. So let's get working in Chief Architect. Across the top of our program, you'll notice our toolbar. This is our standard toolbar option. I'll be working out of this mainly today. So we're going to select our straight wall option to start out. We also have a curved wall option. And once you select that parent tool, you'll have child options that show up over in this left-hand toolbar. We're going to use a few different wall types uh, throughout today's webinar. So I'm going to start out with our exterior. Bring your cursor right onto our grid sheet here. Click and drag. And as I drag that out, I'll have a temporary dimension. So that will kind of give me an idea of how long that wall is. We're not going to be too precise at this point. I'm just going to drag out my walls here and then we're going to dimension in a little bit. So I'll just bring that out. Then we're going to change our wall to an interior wall. Just click and drag that up. So I'm going to just create our basic shape that we'll be working within. And I'm only creating about one room or so. You can definitely create a full structure within our program or just focus on one space. And then after all of your walls are connected, a living area is defined for you. I'm going to get into my camera tool and show you what um, was automatically created. So we'll use our perspective camera and I'll use our perspective floor overview. So that will bring up our 3D view and you'll notice our flooring's automatically placed in our design, our base molding. You'll notice that for the exterior wall, we have our siding, we have our drywall on the interior. The program also creates an automatic ceiling for you. And then we can continue working in this view. So I'm going to single click in that room. And once you single click in the room or an object, you will have an editing toolbar at the very bottom uh, left-hand corner here so we can adjust that object. So I'm going to open up our room specification. We can change our room type. Let's change that to a bath. You can also rename that if you'd like. Underneath our structure panel, we can change our ceiling height, floor height. So if you have um, kind of a custom ceiling design, uh, you can definitely work with that. The program automatically drops the flat ceiling over this room. You can uncheck that if you're going to be creating a cathedral or vault ceiling. 
You can also modify your floor uh, platform structure and so forth right here. And then you'll have control over the molding in the room, your wall covering, and additional materials. But that's good enough for now, so I'll select OK, and that will update our flooring. So just by changing our room type, changed our flooring. And this is kind of an automatic feature you can set up in your defaults for your kitchen, utility, bathroom, so that flooring, your kind of standard flooring that you use for those spaces can be set up for you, so you don't have to go through additional steps. And then we can continue working. Um, we do have all of our active kind of tools across the top here still. So I'll single click on my wall tool, get into my interior wall again. We need to create some closet spaces here. So I'm just going to click and drag that over. Then we're going to create another closet on this side. So just click and drag that over. So pretty easy to really work in your 3D view as well. And you'll notice that our rooms are still associated with the bath. And if you wanted to change the flooring material in your closets, we can easily get right into our library and find a different material. So I'm going to open up my library browser here. And we can just search for an item. I'm just going to type in carpet here. And that will bring up all of the keywords that are associated with carpet. So I'll select it and then bring my cursor right onto my flooring. You'll see that we have a spray can here. So I can then single click and apply that to our floor. I'm going to rotate around. We have this move camera with mouse tool and that will enable us to orbit in our view here. I'll single click on that material in my library again and then paint our flooring. So it's great to apply different materials in your 3D views. I'm going to close out of our library here and close out of our 3D view. And you'll notice that we do have our labels here. I'm going to single click on my label. I want to just hide these labels from my view. So I'll single click on that item. And again, I do have a new toolbar at the very bottom to edit uh, what I've selected here. One of the options is our object layer properties. So that will bring up all of the different layers associated with the room label I've selected. So I can just turn that off and we can just hide that from our view. So Chief Architect does work on layers, um, so everything will have an association there that you can turn on or off depending on what you would like to see in that view. Now that we have um, some of our walls placed, I need to um, create one more room, and this is our toilet room over here. And now I'm going to start dimensioning. I'm going to single click on my right hand wall there. And as you can see, we have a temporary dimension that shows up parallel and perpendicular to our wall that we've selected. So first, I'm going to single click on that temporary dimension parallel to the wall, and we're going to change that to 164 inches. You'll also see that we have additional control on how that wall is moved. So I want to make sure that the top is locked so the bottom moves. Then I'll hit enter on my keyboard. While that wall is still selected, I can single click on that uh, perpendicular. We're going to do a hundred and a half inches there. And if you're working with feet, just put the foot marker in there. Um, but inches, the program um, just kind of recognizes that and you're good to go. So now we have our first closet dimensioned out. We're just going to work our way through here. So for the toilet room, I'm going to bring that to uh, 62 and a half inches. And across here, we're going to do 66 inches. And then between this area, this is where I'll be placing my shower and then our bathtub. And then for our other closet over here, we need to uh, modify slightly. So first, I'm going to bring this wall back a bit. 
We're going to do 460 inches and 7 eighths. So you can do decimals, fractions, whatever you need to in this area. And then we'll make that a little bit larger, 95 inches. Do 138 here. And for this little wall, we're going to bring that up just a little bit more to 25 inches and over slightly to 200. So I like to work in a clockwise fashion and just work around and dimension everything out there. Now that we have everything accurate in our design, I'm going to get into a different 3D view and we're going to start working on this back wall. So I'll single click on my camera again and this time we'll use our full camera. Click and drag to your focus. So this is um, going to position us in that room. So we'll see our uh, ceiling has been placed right over us. All right, so now that I have our 3D view open, let's start uh, working towards the vanity area. And I found an inspiration picture. I really like how uh, those cabinets are arranged, uh, the different sections in our cabinet with the drawers, door, and drawer. And I do like this toe kick. Um, it's kind of a foot option with our toe kick in the back as well. So this is the style that I'm going to work towards um, today. So I'll get right back into our program here and grab our base cabinet. So we'll use our cabinet and then base cabinet. Through these child options, you'll notice we do have a wall cabinet here, full height, soffit, shelf partition, and then cabinet and backsplash tools. So we'll be working through um, quite a few of those today. We're going to start out with that base cabinet and you'll notice that we have a reference. So I see that where it's going to be placed. If you put your cursor right into the corner, it will automatically change to that corner cabinet. So that's an efficiency step for you. I'm going to just bring that out and single click and drop in a standard base cabinet. These are all of the materials I've set up through my default, so if you have a standard cabinet material, countertop, backsplash, you can set that all up in your defaults before you get going for efficiency factors. So I'll open that up for specification. Underneath our cabinet styles, we can change that style in here as well if you have an angled front, bow front, um, this is where you're going to control that. We can modify our size, so I'll change our width here to 48 inches. And then through our countertop, we'll keep everything the same. We're going to remove that backsplash because I'll be using our custom backsplash tool later. So just hit zero in the height and that will remove it. Our toe kick specifications are here and that all looks good. So I'm going to move down to my construction, the box construction panel. Uh, you are able to modify this to be framed. You can do a different overlay and be specific here. You can also change that to be inset. And then through our front size and back panel, this is where we can control all of the different components that make up this cabinet. So for our cabinet, I'm going to start out by deleting our drawer up top here. So I'll single click on that item and hit delete and that's removed. Next we need to create three vertical sections. So this is one section right now, but I can click on split vertical and now I have two vertical sections. I'll just single click on this left side and make another split. Now we're getting, going to start working here. So first we're going to change our item type to a drawer. And you'll notice we do have many different options. You can change your doors to be hinged from top or bottom, right and left, add a panel, um, and then of course you can get into opening, separations, and so forth. But we'll just do a drawer for now. And it's one big drawer. So now for this section I'm going to split horizontally, so we have two, now we'll have three. So I want to equalize these, I want them all to be the same size. So as I've been splitting these different items, 
you'll notice that our list is getting a little longer over here. Our drawer that is selected is highlighted. I'm going to single click on the next level up, kind of the parent of those drawers. And once I select that, you'll see that all of those drawers are highlighted and I can hit equalize. And now they're all equally distributed there. I'm also going to change our width here to 10 and a half. So you can really create any custom cabinet vanity that you would like. Next, we're going to make this a left door. And I'll change our width to be 24 inches. And then we'll finish this off with our other section here. Do the same thing, change that to a drawer. Split horizontally twice. Select the parent of all of those and equalize. All right, so all of the face items have been set up here, but I want to change our door style. So that will take us down one to the door and drawer panel. And for our style, I'm going to change this to be a basic frame door. You can also get into our library. We have many different manufacturer catalogs that you can choose from. Uh, and I'll show you the different manufacturers where you can find that list on our website at the end of today's webinar. This is where you'll also control your hardware. So if you wanted to change your handles or hinges, you can do that as well. That's good enough for now. Through the accessories panel, you can add pilasters, feet, panels, and I'm going to add feet here. Let's get into our library. So we have a couple different library folders here. The core catalog is our standard generic library that comes with the program. We also have a bonus catalog. Those are generic items that we create um, and you can download from our website. Then we have the manufacturer catalogs. Those are downloadable from the website as well. And that user catalog is your own custom folder. And I'll be working out of that quite a bit today because I have my own custom folder made. Um, and I'll show you a little bit more about that later. So I'll expand my core catalog here, get into my millwork and select our cabinet feet. I'll do our beaded foot option there. And so that has automatically replaced our toe kick with our new feet. So if we'd like to have a toe kick remain, we can just place a checkbox there. So now we have a toe kick. But I'd like to stretch our feet and join them in the middle. So we can stretch to fit. And then we can also modify this offset. I'm going to change that to three inches and that will position it correctly on our cabinet. You can also add molding to your cabinetry, change your materials, your labels. So if you wanted to do your own custom nomenclature, you can do that in here as well. That's it for now, so I'll select OK. And that has been updated. I'm just going to bump it over to our wall. So these are smart objects. They're going to bump up to other objects so you don't have to uh, work too hard in placing those. Since our cabinet is frameless, I'm going to just use my arrow key on my keyboard and move it over one inch. So every tap of the arrow on your keyboard moves it over an inch. And you'll notice that it will automatically place a filler in there. And it will place that filler up to three inches. Uh, we also have a filler tool if you want to be uh, more specific and add your own custom filler in there. But I just wanted to um, show you that nudge tool is really nice with a nudge arrow on your keyboard. All right, so we have our cabinet placed here. Next, I want to add a sink into our cabinet. So I'm going to open up our library here, close out of that search, and I'm going to expand my user catalog. I've created my own custom folder, bathroom. So through that user catalog, if you right click, you can create your own custom folders. You can import backdrops, images, new materials, additional 3D objects. So it really gives you a lot of flexibility on what you use in your design. So for my bathroom, I'm just going to single click on the folder and I'll get a good preview of everything listed here. So I found a sink from Kohler. 
and I'll just single click right onto my sink and it's letting me know it's going to automatically change um, our top two drawers to be false drawers. So since this is one big kind of face item in our cabinet, everything kind of above here is going to be subject to that change. You can definitely get right back into the cabinet here and you'll see when I single click on that top drawer it automatically changed that to a false drawer. Our sink is pretty narrow here so you can change that right back to just a drawer if you'd like to. Alright next let's drop in our faucet. This one is um, from Kohler as well. I just copied those items and pasted those into my own custom folder. So it's nice if you're using the same items over and over to create your own folder for efficiency. Now I'm going to select it and in the editing toolbar at the bottom we have a center object tool. So I'll single click on the center object tool, bring it onto my sink, and then single click again and that will center that. Next I have a mirror that I'd like to place and we'll just click on the wall and place that. We'll center that on our cabinet as well. And I do have a hand towel that I'd like to place on the wall here. And we'll just drop that in and move that back slightly. Okay, so we have a few items here. Next let's move over to kind of that makeup vanity area. So I'll get um, back into my cabinet tool, have that base cabinet, drop it in just by a single left click. Then I'm going to single click on my cabinet and you'll notice that we have different editing handles on either side, top, bottom, and middle. So on the bottom I'm going to click and drag that up so we can resize these with these editing handles. I can drag that out, maybe we want that 36 inches and I'm going to open that up here, make a few more modifications. Again, let's remove that backsplash. And instead of the 12 inch heights, maybe I'll do 9 inches. And then we can also change where this is positioned. So instead of using those editing handles in the 3D view, you can also be very specific in our dialog here. You can also specify whether that's off of the finished floor or just the floor or from the ceiling. So if you're working with wall cabinets, it's really nice to position off of the ceiling instead. Uh, so a couple different options in positioning on the wall there. We'll remove our toe kick and single click on that drawer. I'm going to change that to a double drawer. And there we are. Alright, so that's been positioned. Now I want to just copy all of these items and paste them onto the other side. So all of that work that we did, I'm just going to hold down control on my keyboard and then I can single click on multiple objects and they'll all highlight together and be selected. So then I can then copy those. So down in our editing toolbar I have a copy and paste. So single click on that and then I'm going to single click on our reflect about object. So that's kind of like our center object. Um, we'll just bring our cursor onto that middle cabinet that we'd like, single click, and those are reflected onto the other side of that. So our towel is going to float here for a bit because um, I do want to add some shelving here. So we'll get right back into our cabinet tool, select the shelf, and I'll just drop in a shelf here, single click on that shelf, center that onto our cabinet, and then we'll open that and I want to change our uh, height of that, so the height of this shelf. We're going to do about one and a half inches there. Alright, that looks good. And then we can just copy that and paste another one up top here. Maybe we'll bring it down slightly. There we go. Alright, next I'll grab my uh, stool here and I'll just drop in a stool. 
And we have additional accessory options as well. So I have these hand towels. I'm just going to bring that right onto my shelf, single click, and it looks like it's off a little bit here. Let's move that over. So you can start accessorizing in your design as well. All right, I'm going to close out of our, of our library here, and I'm going to tile vertically. So I'd like to have my floor plan and 3D view open at the same time. So I'll just click on my tab for my floor plan and drag it down. So now everything is tiled and we can work in two different views. I'm going to add two full height cabinets here. So I'll just drop one in and bump it over. Let's rotate our 3D camera a little bit with our orbits option. Just click and drag around to orbit. All right, and for this one, I'm just going to drag it out to be 33 inches. And we'll copy that. And we'll just drag the copy over. And now we have our full height cabinets there. You can also resize those. Maybe we want to bring those up slightly. It's nice to have your 3D view open. You can really see how that change affects the space. I'm going to just double click on the header of our 3D view. And let's talk about our materials that we have here. So first of all, I'm going to bring up that image again. I really like how um, they have our flooring down here, kind of a marble hexagon shape here. We do have a very similar tile in our library. So I found that and added it to my library. So we're going to just apply a new material here. So select the material in the library and then bring your cursor onto the floor, single click, and that material has been applied. And then for our cabinets, I wanted to show you uh, some different controls with our material painter. So we have a material on our mirrors that I'd like to apply onto our cabinets. So we do have a nice material eyedropper tool that will make this pretty efficient. We can just single click on the frame of our mirror and with our paint can active, we know that that is ready to apply. So down in our editing toolbar, we do have some different options for how that is applied. So component mode means it's going to apply it just to those drawers. If we were in object mode, it's going to apply that to the entire object. So the box, the feet, all of the um, options on that cabinet. And then we do have room mode, floor mode, and plan mode. So I'm in room mode now with one click. It's going to modify my base cabinet and full height cabinets. So it's very nice to be efficient when you're wanting to apply a new material across the board. Uh, you can do that throughout your entire floor or your entire plan. Next, let's um, place on a custom backsplash. So we'll get right back into our cabinet tool. Click on that custom backsplash tool and then single click on our wall back here. So you'll see that the outline has cut around all of our cabinets and is going up to our full height. I'm going to just drag that down here right underneath our mirrors. So now we have our custom backsplash placed. Let's apply a new material there. So I have a countertop material that I'd like to place. I'm in room mode again. So with one click, all of my countertops are changed. And then there's my backsplash. So with our mirrors, you'll notice that we don't have any reflection in them at this point. We have some different render settings through our preferences that we can control. So through preferences, I'll get into render and we're in a preview right now. So I'll single click show reflections in mirrors. Okay. Now we have our reflections placed in our mirrors. So a great option to make it a little bit more realistic in your standard views. So we need to add a few doors to this room. In our 3D view, um, I'm going to just work with our default 
door option. So through the door control, we do have our standard hinge door, a doorway, sliding door, pocket door, bifold, and so forth. So those are all of your standard options. Of course, you have more control through your library. We're going to just start out with our default hinge door. I'm going to bring my cursor onto the wall, single click, and I've added this to an interior space so it drops in an interior door. And since we're only working with one room and not a full structure, this wall that I'm going to place it on exits to an exterior space. So it's going to automatically place an exterior door. So let's open up this door here. I'm going to change our style to panel or we can also get into our library and find this exact same um, door panel. You can also change it, the door type if you would like to change that to a pocket door instead. You can do that in here instead of deleting it. I'm going to get right into my library and find that same exact door. That's going to be under our panel rectangular and this is that exact same um, interior door panel. I'm going to keep our width the same so we do have a nice large door to bring in a bathtub and so forth. And through our panel options you'll notice you are able to control a lot of different aspects to your door. I'm going to get into our materials and our interior is this bone color and the exterior is a slate so just to give you an idea of material control through the actual object, you can select on that and then select material. We have three different sections here, the library, which is your entire library, or a plan material. And I like this area because it really reduces how many items are available to choose from. These are all of the items that are currently being used in our plan. So we'll find that same uh, color bone and then our door is updated. All right, we'll close out of our 3D view here and continue dropping in a few more doors in our plan. So I'm zooming out just by using the scroll wheel on my mouse. You can zoom in and out of your plan. You can also hold down that scroll wheel on your mouse and that changes it to a pan hand. So those are little shortcuts for you. And you'll also notice that I still have my full height cabinet active. So to select um, a door and so forth, I would like to have my select object arrow. A shortcut for this is your space bar on your keyboard. So just hit the space bar on your keyboard and that will put you right back to that select object arrow. So then you can single click on any object, single left click, and have control there. So if you wanted to change the uh, swing side of that, you can do so just by dragging that around. Or if you keep dragging it over, it will also change the hinge side. So I'll get back into my door options, and we'll drop in um, a, another door into this closet. You can select that opening and also have control over that right in your temporary dimensions. You can have that positioned maybe 67 inches and now we have that positioned accurately. And then I'll also drop in a pocket door here. And if you click and drag it around you can also change the hinge and swing side before you let go of your click. Alright, so now that we have our doors placed, I want to add one window here over our bathtub area and I'll click and resize this. You can also open that up and resize it here. Let's just do 60 inches. And I'm going to change our window type to be a left sliding. So again, just like our doors, you have a lot of different control over uh, the different components that make up this window. Alright, so that will address all of our openings here. 
and we're all set with that vanity area so let's move towards our shower. So I'm going to take a different camera view, just click and drag over to our focus where we'll be designing and I'm going to tile vertically so just click and drag down that tab and now we're tiled vertically. So I have a picture here to give you an idea of where we're going. Alright, here's the glass shower that we'll be creating. So I'm going to start out by um, creating our walls and then we'll work our way um, into that space. So since our walls do not reach our ceiling, I'm going to use our half wall tool. So that's in our straight wall option again. Just select that straight half wall and click and drag it out here and I'm just going to drop those in. We're going to dimension after we change our wall thickness because I am going to multi-select. Again, just hold down control on your keyboard and then single click on each item. So now I can open up both of those walls at the same time and through our wall specification, or in this case, it's a railing specification because it's only a half wall we can get into our wall types and this is an interior for wall type at this point but I need to change that to a glass shower so you'll notice we do have many different wall type options for you you can also get in and define your own wall type if you need to change the thickness of this or add different layers you can definitely do that and next let's get into our newels and baluster. This is where you'll find your height. So we'll bring that up to 96 inches. And you'll also see in our preview that that railing, which you can really see in our 3D view, that railing is still um, on top there. So let's get into our materials and find that rail. And we're going to match it with our uh, glass tempered. So again, I'll just get right into our plan materials Go down to G for our glass tempered, and there we go. So now our materials are matching. So we have a new glass shower room in here. There's a couple things I need to do in regards to our molding, both on the outside and the um, inside of that room. So first I'm going to address our molding on the outside. So within Chief Architect, uh, we can just single click in our room and I'm going to go right down to the, our, our editing toolbar here. We have an option that says make room molding polyline. So this will enable us to control the molding on each individual section here. So I'll just hit OK, that's fine. We're not really adding anything new. We're just making sure that we can control these sections. So I'm going to single click on this section and down in our editing toolbar we have a remove molding from selected edge. So with one click it has been removed. We're going to do the same thing on this selected edge. Remove that and now for the inside of our room single click in our room or we can also double click in that room that's a shortcut for our open uh, object down here. You can double click on items to get into your specification dialog and get into our moldings panel and we're just going to delete it so we don't have any molding in that room. Alright, that looks pretty good here. So let's add a door and this is a half wall, remember? So the program thinks that a door can't really fit into a half wall, but we're going to change its mind because we can override anything that it automatically does. So we're going to move this, have a little offset there, 24 inches, and then I'm going to resize that to be 36, and we'll open that. We're going to change it from a doorway to hinged. And we're also going to change that thickness. We're going to just match it with our wall, which is one half. And then through our hardware, we're going to add handles. 
we're just going to find a few in our library here. So we'll get into our door hardware and commercial. And I like this pull handle. So that one will work well for us. You can also change its positioning if you'd like it um, further up or down on your door. You can just find that same one for the interior as well. Okay. And we'll select OK. You'll notice that our materials don't quite match. So I, I'm going to just highlight that 3D view. Use our eyedropper on the glass. And then I'm going to change that down to component mode. So we're just going to do that door. And I'm going to also modify that door to have the hinge on the other side. And I did need to also get into my options through my door specification. And I'd like to have it swing both directions. We also have a shortcut down in the bottom editing toolbar. Um, now that that's selected, we can click on the show door open. So you can have a little different visual there. Now we need to address our walls. I found an image that I really like the uh, tile work. So we'll be placing kind of a uh, tile on the background here and then do a custom inlay. So through our materials, I'm going to just paint our wall and again, just get right into our library. And I have a material um, in my folder I'd like to apply. So we'll just, uh, we're in component mode again, so we'll just single click on the wall and it will just paint that one wall for us. And we'll just do up here as well. All right, so all of the walls are adjusted with the new tile. So now I'm going to get into a different view. And this will just be our wall elevation. So instead of using our perspective camera, we have an orthographic camera as well. So I'll single click on the orthographic option and then select our wall elevation. Click and drag towards that bottom wall. So that will bring up an elevation of that back or bottom wall there. And we're going to use our CAD tools. We have different line tools that you can use and then convert those to 3D objects. So I'll just click and drag out kind of a good rectangular shape here. Single click on that CAD line. And then we're going to dimension that a little bit here. Let's bring that up to 12 inches. Bring that down to 12. And then on either side, just going to bring that in maybe 20 inches here and 20 inches there. You know, that's a little narrow, so pretty easy. We can just bring that out slightly. Let's do 18. All right, now that we have that modified correctly, I am going to convert this 2D CAD line or box to a 3D material. Down in our editing toolbar, we have a convert polyline and I'll change this to a material region. Once it changes that to a material region, we can get into our layers here and edit those. It automatically placed a tile on there at one quarter thickness. Uh, we do have our thin set mortar and then our backer board as well. So you're able to get in here and modify this if that doesn't meet your exact needs. But that works for us. So I'll select cancel here and OK. So now that has applied our material. And I'd also like to add an edge tile around the outside. So I only want that to go around the outside. So I'm going to do similar steps. Um, now that we already have that specific kind of CAD box dimension, I'm just going to copy what we've already placed here. So I'll just do our copy and paste in place. So we have an exact replica. I'm going to convert that back to a CAD line and then re 
establish that as 3D, we're going to change that to be our 3D molding polyline. All right, so it's applied our what our program thinks as a molding, but we'll uh, just call that our edge tile. Get into our profiles here, and we're going to replace that. The tile that I use has a different uh, profile, and I'm going to find that right through my base molding. We have a very similar one here. And that's the profile I'd like to use. The dimensions look great, so I'll select OK. And now that has been applied. So while we're in our uh, elevation view here, we're able to modify materials in this view as well. And you'll notice that in our orthographic view, we have a pattern. And in our library, you'll notice that we have a pattern and a texture. So this is your orthographic view. This is your perspective view, so the, kind of the difference between your patterns and textures there. So we will apply a different material here and then just paste that right on. And we can also adjust that. So you can really work with your tile, um, any different planking and so forth and really adjust and customize this. So we'll use our adjust material definition a little rainbow tool, and then single click on that tile. It's going to bring up our define material dialog where we'll see the name of that, the size of kind of that brick pattern that we have. Let's change our angle. So I'm going to rotate that 90 degrees, give it kind of a waterfall look, and then in our texture, I'm going to rotate that 90 degrees as well. So whichever view we're in, it's going to be represented correctly. And this is tile. It is tiled across the surface at a 20 inch by 20 inch scale. So if you import your own material, you can change that scale. If you have a larger tile here, you can make this larger. Um, so a lot of different controls on how those tiles are represented. If you import a slab of granite, you can stretch to fit, so it's stretched all the way across your island countertop. You can also blend with um, different materials. So if you wanted to make this um, a different material, you can definitely do so. Uh, you'll use this little eyedropper here. And if you wanted to make that gray, you could do that. So you can really um, adjust this to be whatever kind of tile uh, you would like. But I'm going to uncheck blend because I do like that color. I'll select OK. And now that's updated in our view. All right, I'll close out of our elevation view here. Actually, before we do that, I'm going to hit my space bar just to get to my select object arrow. I'm going to single click on my material here and then hold down control on my keyboard and single click on my edge tile. So now I have two items selected. I want to group these together. So if I move them, uh, it's going to be one unit. So down in our editing toolbar, we have make architectural block. So now it's just one unit instead of two separate items. You can also add this to your library. So if you wanted to use this in different designs, you can add that to your library. We'll close out of our elevation view and then select what we've just created. We're going to copy that. We're just going to click in the middle there and that's going to be pasted. You'll notice that our material is not showing on this side. So let's rotate that around. And there it is. And we'll just bump that right back to the wall here. And I'm going to center that on that wall. And now we have our custom tile inlay there. And in our 3D view, I'm going to use my material eyedropper, single click on my molding, and apply that material in this room. I'm going to select my room mode so it applies to both. I like to have that off-white uh, material on there. All right, so now that we have our 
space created here, let's add a few additional uh, fixtures. So we'll get right back into our library and I have found a faucet shower head here. So we'll just click and drop that in. Then I'll select it. This little arrow enables us to rotate that around. And then we'll do our control. We'll have that offset a little bit so we don't have to be standing in the flow of water to turn that on. And I'm going to hold down control on my keyboard. Uh, this really enhances your place and movement of those objects. So as I mentioned, our objects are smart objects. They like to bump up against each other and not interfere with anybody else's space. So if you want to overlap or um, get into the other spaces, just hold down control on the keyboard. That really enhances um, your movement capabilities. And then the next one is our kind of strip drain here. So I'll just place that over here. There's our drain. All right, our shower is complete. So we're going to move on to our bathtub area. So I'm going to zoom out in my or my floor plan here just by using the scroll wheel. And I'm going to hit my space bar to get back to my select object arrow. Select that camera and I'm just going to rotate it around a bit. So now we have a good visual of our bathtub space. So in my floor plan, I'm going to use my primitive tool. So this is just a basic 3D primitive tool. So you can just drop in 3D objects, but I don't see it in my 3D view. So let's open this up and see where it's at. If we open it up, you'll notice that it's actually underneath our floor. This is going to be my bathtub platform. So I'm going to bring this up to 21 inches and we're going to specify this area, but I want that from the floor. So I don't need any tile underneath it. And then we'll also change floor to bottom to be zero. All right, so we have our dimensions set here. I'll select OK. And there it is. So with that in place, I'm going to change our material. Just match it with what we've done in the shower there. And then we need to drop in our bathtub. So I found this oval bathtub. And you know, I'm just going to place that right in the middle of my floor here. And just as I mentioned um, earlier, I'm going to hold down control on my keyboard to really allow us to move that. So now it's sitting right in the middle of our platform. We need to cut out the middle section there. So I'll use my CAD tools to do this. I'll use my oval and I'll zoom in here. So we're just creating a oval CAD line and I'm going to hit tab on my keyboard to hit the next closest object. There we go. I'm just going to move that up slightly. And then we have all these different handles that we can just click and drag around so it matches up here. So this is again, just a CAD line. So we need to convert this to a polyline solid. So again, use our convert to polyline tool. We'll change this to a polyline solid and make a hole in our polyline solid that we've created. So this oval is going to be a hole in the box that we've already designed. And then you can, of course, modify that hole after you've changed the specifications on that. So you can still manipulate after you've changed that to a hole and um, get that accuracy that you need. Next, let's just drop in our faucet here. Drop that in. And I do have a whole um, kind of accessory option. So as I mentioned, earlier about uh, blocking items together as an architectural block and then adding them to your library. That is what I have done. So I'll just 
click that right into my design here and that's pretty close to our camera so it's kind of given us a weird look there but I'm going to rotate that around and we're just going to bring that right back into place. So these are just accessory items that I kind of put together here and we can explode that so now that they're placed I can explode the architectural block zoom in here to our um, different items so these are two different kind of art pieces um, we can select a new piece of art and then paste that right on and make that nice and pretty and one more area here if you do like to have kind of a bench in your shower you can just take this same solid hold down control on your keyboard and just drag it right through and now you have a bench in your shower alright let's close out of this view and I want to talk about our lighting a little bit We'll look at our vanity area because I have some sconces I'd like to place in here. And with the sconce, um, I just found that in our bonus lighting options. So I'm just going to just drop one in here. And as I drop that in, you'll notice the lighting really changes in our view. So with Chief Architect, it will automatically place a light source in the room for you until you actually tell it where you want your lighting. So I'm just going to drop a few more of these in here. I'm just going to copy and reflect those onto the other side. And I'll close out of this view here. Oh, it looks like that was a little too far over. So we'll tile vertically here and we'll find our missing sconce and just scoot that guy over. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to use my electric tool up here to find my default recess light that I have set. I'm just going to drop one in. And with our recess, you can open that up, or with any light fixture, you can open that up and really change the different specifications here. Uh, you can get into your light data, you can change your lumens as you need to, so maybe we want to drop that down to 60. You can change your angle and the type of lighting and so forth in here, whether it casts shadows, whether it's on, so it gives you some different controls on your lighting. And then we also have this multiple copy tool down at the bottom here, and we can maybe put that out uh, 48 inches. So now I just bring my cursor right onto that light and every 48 inches it's going to drop in a light for me. So pretty nice uh, to just have that accurate move option in there. So with the lighting, so I'm going to go up to my switches. We're just going to place one there and I'll zoom out in my 3D view here so you can see that. Um, with the electrical options, we do have a connect electrical. So again, I'll get right back into our plan view. And with our connect electrical, we can really um, define a electrical plan that we'd like to use and modify with our arcs here. So very quickly, you can develop that electrical plan as you need. And we do have additional um, fixtures for like lighting with fans uh, and so forth, which are essential to a bathroom space. You can find those right in our library. In our 3D views, we can also continue working with um, different lighting through the 3D dropdown. You can do 3D view defaults, and you can change your ambient um, interior lighting in here as well. If you want to just increase the brightness a little bit there, you can do so. You can also add uh, light sources without placing a fixture. So um, 
it kind of really gives you a lot of flexibility with your rendering and the lights that you uh, want to show there. Besides this standard view, we also have um, different artistic renderings. So we have a vector view. So that kind of changes that right over to our pattern design. Glass house, so that will show us right through all of those drawers and so forth. We have a duo tone, and you can modify those colors as you go. Here's a technical illustration. Then we also have a painting and the next one here is a watercolor. Then we also have ray trace rendering and that will um, enhance the lighting like I mentioned so you'll really notice the light sources coming through um, and then the reflections in glass um, and different surfaces like your metals and so forth. So that can really enhance uh, the different techniques that you're utilizing, makes it a bit more photorealistic for you. All right, let's get back to our floor plan here. And I just wanted to show you um, a few different areas through our tools. You can find your materials list. So if you want to um, gather materials of this entire space, uh, you can do so quite easily here. You know, it's going to calculate everything that you've used um, to design that space. But if we go right down, you'll have your windows, doors, cabinets, it's going to tell you the different sizing, give you a description and break out of that cabinet a bit. You can also add any extras in here. You can add your own pricing. So once you have your pricing set, save that as a master list so the program remembers that for the next time. And then you can get into additional options if you wanted to add any markup or labor you can add those columns in here as well. If you'd like to uh, work with this in Excel or a different program, you can also export this to Excel, CSV, uh, so it's flexible to go outside of the program for additional modifications there as well. So I wanted to get into a plan here, so I'm going to open up our layout page. So under file we can get into a new layout and this will bring up a separate tab here, a new document. This is our layout page so you can create your own title block on here. We're on page one. You'll go down to page zero to really modify your title block. Anything that you want to show up on every page, um, modify it on page zero and then you'll start bring in your designs over on page one. So let's get into an elevation view of our vanity area. So we'll get into that orthographic option and get into our wall elevation. All right, so we'll just click and drag that towards our back wall. That will bring up our wall elevation for us. You'll see that we have our opening indicators. We can single click on the cabinet and open up the layers for that cabinet and uncheck opening indicators if we want to hide those from this view. And now let's dimension this out a bit. So I'm going to zoom out slightly and use our automatic and KBA dimensioning. So with one click it's going to automatically place my dimensions. And then from here you can also um, just modify. Maybe I'll remove all of those dimensions on this side. Uh, we also have uh, a lot of flexibility in where these are positioned. So I'll single click on that uh, first line here and I can just drag these off. So if I didn't want to have that filler included in this line I can do that easily. And then there's um, a few more touch-ups. If you don't want to have your shelving on this line you can definitely go through and see these little diamonds they are going to be your indicators you can just drag those right off here alright so that looks pretty good just gonna send that to my layout so when we send it to our layout we are able to modify our scale so maybe we want this to be a half an inch so we can modify that and it's going to page one. Select OK and that's going to just bring it right over for us. And then we can position that 
as we need to. And then you can continue working from there, adding different images. Um, one of the nice uh, new features here, you are able to send this over to your layout. And we have a live view now, so you can um, update this saved camera. So I'll just bring that right over. And you can modify how that um, looks here. So we can change the size of that and bring that over. And then with our update option, if you do make changes, it's nice to just update on demand. Um, it takes less resources, but there's an update on demand um, button right here. So it gives you a lot of uh, kind of customization flexibility and the efficiency of not bringing over a new view every time you make a, a change. So everything talks with each other. Um, it's a great efficiency tool. Uh, you don't have to redo those with any change you make. And then underneath our tools, you can also get into your cabinet schedules. And I'll just click and drop in a cabinet schedule here so we can see um, it's going to automatically change our cabinet labels to our callouts. I'm going to double click on our schedule and we're able to add 3D elevations or perspectives to this now. So I'm just going to move that up. So we're just going to add that right underneath the number. So it's going to go number, column, and then 3D perspective. And then you can also remove those columns that you're not using and that will update and there's a little preview and of course you can also modify your views there and resize those as you need to. So I created a um, layout sheet here just to give you an idea. So there's the kind of vanity elevation, a schedule and some different 3D views that we have. I'm going to bring it right over to our website here. If you wanted to see more samples underneath our user center, you can get into our samples gallery and we have additional um, kind of demonstrations. We have our how to videos listed here on this Breckenridge plan. The PDF file is the plan set and there's actually a full workable plan that you can download and um, use as well. So a couple different resources right through our samples gallery. If you haven't worked with our program yet, we do offer a free trial download. So through the free trial download, uh, you just select the Premiere or the Interiors. Um, the Premiere includes everything from the Interiors, except it also has your framing, your landscaping, site plan options, deck design patios, kind of the exterior design capabilities. But most everything I did today will be available in our Interiors version. And through that user center again, I just wanted to um, give you an idea of those different catalog options. So for instance, um, cabinets. If you expand the cabinet area, you'll be able to see all of the different manufacturer catalogs that are offered. So just expand those different areas that you're interested in and you can find the full list of our different manufacturer options. So again, as I mentioned, we have that premiere or interiors. So for just kitchen, bath, and interior design, uh, that interiors program is a great fit at $1,995. We also have a rental option for that Chief Architect Premier. Uh, so you can either purchase that one outright or rent it for $199 a month. In all these cases, you'll be receiving uh, that support and software assurance. So you'll get your priority technical support. We're here to help you out. Um, access to all of our training videos, all of our manufacturer catalogs and bonus catalogs, any new software releases that come out, and then discounts on additional licenses. So with Chief Architect, one license uh, will enable you to install it on as many computers as you need to. Just use it on one computer at a time. All right, thank you so much for attending today. We're going to be open for a few more minutes here answering any questions that you have, so type those in.
um, or give us a call. Uh, we're here to help you out. Email us. Uh, we want to help you get right into the right program for your needs. So let us know. All right. Thanks so much. Have a great day.